Oui, j'ai compris. Uh, well, uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So it's just a slight uh, uh, modification. Uh, at the beginning of this debate, you know, I am not uh, director of the Office of Human Rights because it no longer exists since December of 2012, but I am a deputy secretary at the, the uh, Division of uh, Department of Security and Economy, and I am responsible for coordination of uh, the trafficking of uh, human beings for this canton. So I can see no one because of the light. It's not very easy. I have the light uh, shining straight in my eyes, so I'm going to try and be as uh, uh, clear as possible. So uh, we're going to uh, start this debate with a few words of introduction. Today in the world, you know, as we begin this debate, hundreds of uh, thousands of uh, women, children and women are uh, abused for uh, their workforce, uh, for the uh, use of their bodies as a, a commodity or for the uh, uh, forced taking of their organs. So it's done in uh, uh, total silence, miles away from where we, where we sit now, but not only because the Switzerland is recognized as a country of transit and destination of uh, trafficking of human beings, and Geneva, which is a frontier uh, canton, uh, is, doesn't escape this uh, drama. So we'll ha we will have uh, uh, experts uh, participating in this debate. Uh, thanks to your questions, we will actually take stock of the situation on what we uh, need we must qualify as modern slavery. Nevertheless, as our guest will talk of the international situation, I would like to uh, actually take advantage of this introduction to actually uh, focus on Switzerland and to uh, give you a few uh, common definitions so that we all know what it is we are talking about when we talk of uh, trafficking of uh, human beings. So the definition is found in Article 3 of uh, the additional Protocol of the uh, United Nations Convention Against uh, Organized uh, Crime, aiming at uh, preventing, repress, and punishing the trafficking of persons, and in particular, women and children. So, you know, at the end of the protocol, the expression trafficking of persons designates the recruitment, the transfer, uh, the uh, holding or the uh, reception of people through uh, threats or recourse to uh, strength or other types of uh, uh, constraints through uh, uh, the uh, f fraud, abuse of uh, authority or abuse of vulnerability or the acceptance of payment or uh, advantages to obtain the consent of a person having authority over another uh, for exploitation. So exploitation includes the exploitation of prostitution of other persons or other forms of social sexual exploitation, the work of forced labor, uh, slavery, or uh, practices uh, similar to slavery, uh, so the uh, taking of organs. So the consent, and this is very important, the consent of a victim of uh, uh, trafficking of, of uh, uh, people as uh, announced is uh, indifferent when a means of constraint have been used. So the definition that I've just uh, quoted has been taken over by the Council of Europe in 2005 and a convention and it uh, has other uh, precise and, and uh, of uh, provisions. So Switzerland has ratified this convention at the end of uh, 2012 and our canton has actually uh, criminal uh, provisions in its, uh, its article 182 that uh, provides that uh, the one who as uh, offering a service an intermediary or acquirer uh, actually uh, is involved in the trafficking of human beings at the end of uh, uh, sexual exploitation, exploitation of his uh, work or for the taking of an organ and he will be punished uh, of uh, prison and also a financial uh, fine. Uh, the fact of recruiting a person to this end is uh, considered as trafficking of human beings. If the victim is a minor of uh, the author, is, uh, makes it a profession of his uh, trafficking, is he will actually be uh, he has he'll be sentenced to a minimum of one year jail. These uh, is also punishable 
uh, if it has been uh, perpetrated abroad. Our country will be examined this year by a group of experts of the United Nations and called the Greta. And we can imagine that uh, just like other countries who have uh, been uh, reported on, such as France, Denmark, and other European countries, uh, will recommend uh, to Switzerland to do more. So what, uh, you know, what uh, Simonetta Samoga and uh, the, uh, so they've already accepted. So by actually attributing specific uh, means to fight uh, the trafficking of humans and by developing and uh, making available information to uh, the uh, public at large. So because the trafficking of human beings is not a crime easy to detect, so it requires uh, the attention of each uh, person and also the will to investigate, uh, which also requires uh, uh, huge means. So it is not useless to re remind us that this, the money involved is colossal and it, it, we're talking about billions of uh, dollars and are part of uh, the uh, most lucrative uh, trios with uh, the traffic of uh, uh, weapons and uh, drug trafficking. So to uh, conclude uh, this introductory remarks and in uh, non-legal terms, the three elements uh, that constitute uh, trafficking of human beings are you know, the uh, commoditization of uh, human beings uh, that, uh, actually, uh, that uh, actually means that there's a commercial transaction of an individual with intention of uh, sexual exploitation of his uh, labor for la labor or taking of organ the recourse uh, to disloyal means uh, so, uh, and uh, using force and uh, also it'll, it'll be interesting in our debate we can't shouldn't uh, mistake uh, uh, the trafficking of human beings with uh, legal prostitution or with uh, or with the tr uh, legal tra trafficking of migrants because it is so long as it doesn't at the end of the chain involve a type of exploitation because then it would effectively it be it would actually turn into trafficking of, of uh, human beings the debate just as the film will focus on the trafficking of women and in particular on this international women's day but it is important not to forget you know, all the other uh, forms of exploitation and you know our, uh, the people who are here will actually be free to intervene on these other topics now i'm going to give them the floor to actually uh, go around the table i would also like to say that uh, we uh, are very sorry that uh, Madeleine uh, Rees is not here. She's actually a lawyer specialized in uh, the trafficking of human beings, but uh, also in other uh, gender-related uh, issues. She has unfortunately been taken ill. I would have liked to uh, hear her because uh, it's been several years that she's been unveiling with a lot of uh, courage situations of uh, trafficking of human beings uh, and uh, that she hasn't been heard and even lost her seat at the United Na her job at the United Nations for having actually revealed such a situation. But, uh, you know, but but uh, we have someone else who have actually off the cuff uh, has accepted to uh, uh, replace Madeleine, perhaps not replace her as such, but to participate in this debate, Florence Tercier, who works uh, for the Oak Foundation, uh, foundation specialized in all uh, violence, uh, forms of violence uh, uh, perpetrated upon women, and who will be able to tell you more about the work of the Oak Foundation. And to, to react to this film, I'm going to start by asking uh, Daniela uh, Misai uh, Nichiti, who is the founder and uh, one of the founder and uh, uh, deputy uh, director of uh, the International Center La Strada in Moldova. So you heard in the film, uh, it was meant, this uh, center was mentioned, and uh, the Strada is one of the uh, most powerful international organizations in Europe uh, for the uh, fighting of uh, women trafficking. And, and we have La Strada International. It has is established in eight countries, countries of destination and transit of uh, women trafficking in Central and Eastern Europe, in uh, Belarus, uh, Bulgaria, in the Czech Republic, in Macedonia, in Moldova, in Poland, in the Netherlands, and in Ukraine. So the objective of this uh, uh, network is to try and ensure a world without trafficking of human beings by promoting the respect for human rights. And Daniela, I would like to ask you, uh, you know, to react to this film. Thank you. Uh, the film reflects actually the, the real situation of many, many women who uh, were exploited or who are exploited. The, my, my first reaction is uh, uh, why uh, we saw in the movie only 
victims from Moldova because in such situation there are many others, women uh, from many uh, other countries around the world. I was really shocked um, about the disproportion between how much materials was used in order to document the movie uh, from from victims' uh, testimonies, and only few words um, were used from from customers' perspective, and I put down few words when one of the men said uh, they work what they accept to do and after they feel depressed so they change their mind and um, I respect uh, them and they are working so I think it's crucial to make the difference between the legal prostitution when the woman has the choice and the sexual exploitation. Uh, as you saw and hear Vika's testimony, they have no choice, they have no rights, they have no words to say. Merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you very much. And now I'd like to give the floor to uh, uh, Mariana Kazarova. So Mariana uh, uh, actually uh, graduated from the University of in Sofia and uh, Columbia University in, in New York, and she actually has a diploma in uh, humanitarian uh, law. Mariana comes from Bulgaria. She is now a special advisor for issues on uh, fighting uh, the trafficking in, human, in the, the uh, Bureau of the OIS is it for the Democratic institutions and uh, human rights. So before joining the uh, OSCE, Mrs. Kosarova was advisor for uh, issues on uh, human rights and the uh, High Commission officers for the United Nations. Uh, so uh, for human rights, Mariana, I'd like you to tell us uh, how you feel about the film. So again, in two, uh, with wearing two hats first, uh, uh, because of your, uh, your reaction in terms of the function you have and also as uh, being from Bulgaria. Thank you. Thank you very much. I actually used to be a senior advisor with the OSCE. I'm not at the moment anymore. Um, but um, yes, first of all, happy International Women's Day to all of us. And seeing this film today on International Women's Day, I think just reminded us and reminded me how um, what trafficking really is about. Uh, somebody in the film said trafficking is about power. It's not about sex. We're talking about the sex trafficking. Uh, and really, it is about exploitation. It's about the power of people, of a person that can do it over other people, in this case, over women. And I was just uh, telling my, uh, my colleagues, and I was telling Florence while coming up here on stage, um, this film made me very sad, extremely sad for several reasons. First, that I've seen similar films. I, I had a feeling of a deja vu. I, I was seeing a film that I've seen 20 years ago when we all started working on trafficking, um, when we were trying to define what trafficking really is about. Um, so, we continue to be surprised, it seems. We continue to be surprised that women are trafficked for sex. We will be talking later on about men and children and women being trafficked for labor exploitation, um, being exploited um, as domestic servants. Always, when there is exploitation of women, there is sexual exploitation. Whether the women are servants or whether they are um, working in prostitution or whether they're in private homes, there is almost inevitably, it's a sexualized exploitation. There is sex involved. And I was just thinking that on one hand, it's a told story, it's a known story of exploitation and of women's suffering. It's not that we don't know, 
we have seen it, we know it, we now have laws, of course, you uh, kindly uh, quoted the whole complicated uh, definition of what trafficking, trafficking is and isn't. And in the end of the day, um, it seems that we continue to be surprised. We continue to watch these films as we have never seen it before, year after year. Uh, where is our outrage as citizens, all of us? Where is our uh, definitive saying enough? It's enough. It's enough women to be treated as meat. As one of the doctors said, when I go to a brothel, I see that I see meat. And then I think he himself became embarrassed because he was kind of one of the good guys, right? And he said, no, no, it's not really meat, I see pain. Um, how long we're going to be doing something, but it seems not enough. Um, we, the good people that are fighting trafficking, became a bigger industry than the traffickers themselves. We are an industry, because it seems we're working and working and working, and we're not getting to uh, even closer to uh, the end of this suffering for women and for men and for children uh, because we're not really uh, tackling the very reason why people, um, and in this case women, make this uh, unsafe and sometimes mad migration decisions. And we're not tackling the issue, the connection between trafficking and migration. It's not always poverty, but what we saw in this film was immense poverty and desperation, and most importantly, lack of any hope. There was no hope in this film, no hope for any of these women. Uh, for me, I really was uh, brought to, you know, I, I became tearful when I was watching the story of the woman who jumped. Um, jumped in Istanbul and her parents and the whole relationship with her mother. She said, when I was jumping, I was thinking of my mother and now she's not close to her mother because her mother is an alcoholic who is using her disability pension, which is probably, I don't know, uh, $20 in Moldova to, uh, to drink. And then this perpetual... Um, hopelessness, perpetual violence as well, because I'm sure in these families, these girls have seen also a lot of violence of these parents who also lived in the hopeless um, life in these villages. So, yeah, um, that's my reaction is, um, maybe today on this Women's Day, we could all promise each other that we're not just going to work endlessly to stop trafficking, that we will really stop it. We will stop it by our outrage and by our commitment and by our human, each of us, um, really desire to, um, to say enough. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your feelings about the film. Thank you. Uh, I think, you know, the word uh, uh, indignation is uh, something we all felt about when we watched this film. So, you know, uh, Florence uh, Tercier, so as I was saying, you know, you've uh, uh, you, uh, spontaneously uh, accepted our invitation. Uh, uh, and uh, I'd like to know how you uh, uh, feel about the film. I mean, do you know about the situation, you know? Uh, and uh, so uh, thank you, of course. Uh, outrage is something one can feel. And, you know, I've been uh, working on these issues. I mean, the foundation uh, finances several programs in Moldova and uh, Bulgaria in the uh, Balkans and other uh, international uh, uh, we work with organizations like the Strada, uh, uh, 
headed by uh, uh, Daniela, who um, actually uh, helps out uh, uh, victims of uh, uh, trafficking. And I'm used to uh, working in English language. And so these organizations not only you know, uh, are there to help uh, the victims, uh, who very often uh, uh, actually uh, take it back to their own countries, sent back to their own countries, but they also work on the prevention in those very countries, and we saw an example of the work being done in schools. So what I feel about the film is, yes, it's true, you know, it is part of the reality, I mean, the, the issue of uh, uh, trafficking, and which is, you know, uh, for uh, sexual exploitation, that is one side of reality. The other side of reality is, of course, what uh, Mariana mentioned which is, you know, the uh, trafficking, uh, uh, you know, for uh, other types of exploitation, for uh, labor exploitation. And this reality was not uh, shown in this film, but uh, we're told about, or we're shown uh, Dubai, and we could have also uh, shown the same situation, you know, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, workers in the field of uh, construction, because we're talking about uh, trafficking. This, I think th th this film was very good at showing the uh, complexity uh, of uh, the issue. And uh, we are uh, outraged, but uh, we are, how could I put it? Uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're overtaken uh, but because, you know, the, the questions, the roots and causes, I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's very complex and uh, uh, I don't think there's any sort of easy solution. I think that when we started talking about the, the issue of trafficking, uh, the modern uh, form of slavery, and uh, a few t ten years ago, with you know the uh, Palermo Protocol. Generally speaking, we've shown this question as being uh, exclusively uh, linked to uh, uh, women who were being uh, sexually exploited, uh, and uh, these women who were uh, victims of uh, trafficking. And I think, you know, I think that it's much more complicated than this, and we're a bit at, at, at a loss to, 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 to understand the roots of all of this. And if you look at these women in Moldova, I mean, the social and economic question comes into play, the issue of inequalities, uh, gender issues, and also the, the issue issue of, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the demand issue regarding prostitution. And these are not questions that can just be just solved, uh, you know, by snapping one's fingers. Uh, so uh, it's, it's really when, when you're working on uh, this uh, issue, we have to keep uh, in mind that uh, there's, you know, many different issues intertwined and, you know, global issues uh, come into play. Thank you. So, uh, uh, so uh, let's uh, uh, still uh, uh, focus on the film. So, Daniela, you know, you uh, uh, look after victims. So, is there a specific profile of these victims? It was the, terrible at the end when you see this young girl, you know, l you know, lovely child with these uh, wide open eyes, and what's going to become of her? She's 12 years old. Is she also going to fall prey uh, to? Uh, the trafficking. Uh, so, you know, with the women uh, that uh, come to you, do you see, you know, special profiles? I mean, is there, are there certain characteristics, you know, uh, poverty? I mean, are there any specific profiles uh, in these girls? Actually, women uh, victims of trafficking are uh, coming from a very, a very vulnerable environment. So it's not about only social econom economic uh, condition. Uh, not about lack of job, lack of well-paid job, um, lack of uh, life opportunities. Because as you saw in the movie, when one of the um, uh, women suffering survivor of uh, trafficking said, if I have a man who can help, so lack of trust in herself and herself uh, power to decide and to, to organize her life. Another big issue is domestic violence. More than 80% of survivors of trafficking are actually victims of domestic violence. So they are raised in a very abusive circumstances and they accept the, the illegal sometime offers or 
uh, dubious offers go to going abroad in order to interrupt the cycle of violence. And the most dramatic uh, is when after the exploitation, the women and sometimes children are in the situation to be replaced in the same violent family situation. So our role as organization who are dealing with uh, prevention and uh, assistance victims issue is to ensure that the violence will stop defin definitely, definitively for these uh, women and children because we cannot speak about an um, well reintegration of a, a, a women or children suffering for any any cases of exploitation when if we are not able to stop this cycle so we uh, get the impression when uh, she goes home it's very difficult because it's, uh, you know, again, it means for families there's less money coming in. There's also the shame they feel and the fact, you know, that they're being rejected by their family. You get the impression, you know, that, you know, you know, you know they have an internal uh, uh, pain and how can they actually escape this, you know, you know, you know, you know so, you know, what, what can they hope for, you know, as a life when they go home? Actually, it depends on the, the family circumstances. Uh, in some cases, it's better for, uh, for women not to... Um, can, I, can I speak in Russian? The translator? Um, so, so this woman doesn't go back to her family. Because, because, you know, they're going to uh, suffer from the trauma even more. But there are situations when, when the family uh, are, are kind and uh, can provide the uh, psychological uh, help the woman needs. It's important to understand that, you know, to really... Uh, you know, to be able to, to talk and to uh, fit in and to improve the relations with the family psychologists and social workers and uh, uh, doctors, uh, physicians, all these all these professionals who can help. Uh, and uh, they have to work with uh, all the members of the family. It's only when you have the, uh, the psychological uh, support for all the family members, it's only then that you can actually uh, have a successful reintegration. It's also important uh, to uh, stress uh, the fact that, uh, you know, the uh, psychological uh, support uh, has to be provided not only to the woman who has suffered from the trafficking, but also to her children. Because, you know, being in a uh, situation of exploitation, and these, you know, there are uh, defense mechanisms that uh, come into play. They'll, they'll be very, she'll become very aggressive because of the defense mechanisms. She'll start having nightmares. She'll, uh, you know, she'll keep dreaming of the situations in which she felt she was exploited. And this, uh, uh, she may become aggressive vis-a-vis uh, -vis her children or her parents. That is why it is very important for this uh, psychological, psychological support should be provided to all the families. Members, it's also important to, to uh, uh, you know, ha you know, provide the uh, uh, proper economic conditions to the family members so that she can continue improving her life. It's also important to provide normal conditions so that uh, her children can, you know, go to kindergarten and then uh, for this woman to uh, be able to find a job to improve her economic uh, situation and for her to be able to actually. Uh, uh, live. So many uh, factors have a real impact on the reintegration and, and we're not just talking about providing support to the person who suffered from uh, trafficking but to all uh, family members. Thank you. So uh, Maria uh, Katsarova. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we saw in the film that uh, Turkey, uh, uh, you know, is actually a, uh, a cross crossroads for all these women and many, many. So you are an expert for human rights at the international level. Turkey has, uh, quite a, some time ago, has actually applied to join the European Union. I mean, are we? Uh, is anything being said about the fact that you know that Turkey is at the centre of uh, uh, trafficking? I mean, is it being discussed in the international fora? I really don't think Turkey is the only country in the center of trafficking. Uh, actually, if we just cross the river and go to Paki, we could be in a mini center where we could examine. Um, I think a lot of countries are. Um, this, is the, this is the whole problem that this film, um, which was very well made and, and touched us and moved us, um, but obviously, as only one film, one documentary, although it was 73 minutes, it covered extensively Moldova, um, but it didn't really cover Bulgaria so much. I'm Bulgarian, the, the woman who made the film is Bulgarian as well. I wanted to see um, for her going deeper into Bulgaria. Then she went uh, in Turkey and she went in Dubai. Um, the problem is that this is where she was following the story. It's not only that Turkey is, is the massive place for trafficking and say other countries aren't. But um, I think maybe what is important for us to, to acknowledge is yes, countries like Turkey, countries like the former Soviet Union countries, other Balkan countries are trying to join the EU and um, why, uh, for example, the um, fight against trafficking is not made as one of the stronger conditions for joining the European Union? Why um, improving um, or preventing trafficking from happening or prosecuting the traffickers, really, and how you treat the victims is not um, more money of all the funds for pre-accession funds to the European Union are not used to improve the situation in these countries. So maybe this is what we should be asking ourselves. Um, how the, the pre-accession European funds of the European Union are used and are they really used to benefit um, in a preventive way uh, trafficking from happening in the first place, and then when it happens, look, what struck me really the most about this film is that uh, this interview with the, with the two police officers, the two police officers in Turkey who were actually sex tourists, uh, openly saying that they were going for all these Europe East European women in these East European countries. Um, so I think we should be tackling, in not only in Turkey, the impunity of officials. If you were a member of a police force, uh, and in the case of Moldova, it was actually a few years back, it was the Minister of, of Interior who was implicated in human trafficking, and he was the coordinator in charge of stopping human trafficking. Um, so, uh, but in other countries as well. Um, where, why um, officials continue to enjoy being exempt, why diplomats continue to, to be exempt from the fact that many of them have slaves or visit brothels, sometimes with trafficked women in them. Um, so I think tackling impunity on the highest level and on all levels of, of officials in all these countries um, looking into following the money, our money as taxpayers, how are they spent in terms of accession funds to the European Union, but also within the European Union. Um, being vigilant, when we see in front of Migro, when I lived in Geneva, there was all this begging Romanian people, maybe they were all legally here, but does anybody ask the question, how these 
obviously peasant looking group of Romanian disabled people who were begging in front of Migro, uh, sorry, not Migro, Manor, I'm sorry, Manor. Who were they? Who were, um, who brought them here? Are they legal or are they exploited people for begging? Which is another very serious form of trafficking within the European Union, including uh, Bulgarian children, for example. Many of these children, but not all of them, Roma. Um, women, children, for forced begging within the European Union. Um, and another, you know, very big question in terms of um, how we should tackle trafficking on the international level is um, not just focus on the victim. We need to focus on the victim. This is the human rights approach in its the human rights approach to addressing trafficking demands it. But let's look at the traffickers. How is it possible to allow such exploitation from happening? Sometimes um, corporations are involved. Sometimes it's, it's a whole, it's not just peep criminal people that are doing it, but it's a whole industry of trafficking. The same rings are often involved in drug trafficking, in um, in other financial crimes. Um, so these are the questions that we should be asking ourselves and, and really be realistic in the end of the day because trafficking is about inequality and about exploitation. So while three billion people around the world are making less income than the subsidy of a European cow within the European Union, how can we expect that these people will not make uh, unpopular migration decisions and will engage eventually with traffickers to be trafficked, to find a better life? So our responsibility that is that this migration is safe, that it's, it's legal, that it's um, profitable for everybody in the end of the day. And also within the countries themselves that if we, as Europeans, give our taxpayers money for aid somewhere else and within the European Union, that we actually account every penny of this money. We fight corruption. We fight corruption within the European Union, outside the European Union, um, and that aid is connected to accountability. So, uh, obviously, you know, it seems that it's not uh, money as such that's uh, lacking, but it's actually all the entities to uh, actually uh, monitor how the money is being spent. So, uh, so Florence uh, uh, Tercier, uh, uh, so could you tell us about, you know, the types of programs you've uh, uh, d developed in those countries? How do you go about uh, uh, handing out the money? Who are your partners? I mean, again, uh, you know, it's, it's a very large foundation, but it is still a small uh, structure if you compare it with the size of the governments. How can you uh, make sure that the money that you uh, hand out reaches those people it's intended to reach? Well, you know, many, many questions. Uh, perhaps that, you know, when we're talking of this issue of uh, uh, financing uh, the, the measures or initiatives uh, against uh, trafficking that have been implemented all across the world. I'd like to first say that, yes, it's true, you know, this issue of uh, uh, funding uh, has been uh, uh, completely biased because, uh, you know, most of the uh, programs that have been uh, uh, implemented, that have been uh, financed all over the world, uh, it's been done by the United States. Uh, after the uh, Palermo Protocol, the United States uh, have uh, uh, put themselves forward as the uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, guarantee uh, of this process, and they produce uh, uh, trafficking, uh, the TIP report, the Trafficking in Persons report, and it's published every year. And uh, you know what it does is actually uh, report on how the uh, states around the country uh, have taken measures uh, to uh, fight uh, trafficking. I mean, you know, uh, uh, considering uh, uh, the U.S. policy, uh, this uh, report 
government is very uh, far from being uh, neutral uh, in terms of its vision and the uh, assessment of the measures that are uh, taken. So this is one parameter. And the other parameter I wanted to mention is that you know much of the, uh, the money that has been uh, uh, been attributed to uh, uh, fighting trafficking across the world has been uh, uh, put on the table by the United States with a uh, condition that, that's called the anti-prostitution pledge. What it means is that there's a commitment on the part of all organizations who receive uh, funds to not, they have to commit to not promote prostitution and especially to actually uh, to actually uh, uh, to actually follow uh, the uh, the uh, United States policy, which is the best way to fight trafficking, is to fight prostitution. I mean, whether you agree with this position or not, well, that's you know, not the question. But the fact is that a lot of money has been uh, uh, put out uh, to uh, fight trafficking, but it has been somewhat biased through this clause and also uh, through the commitment that the organizations uh, had to uh, take. Uh, to, they had to actually commit to fight prostitution as well. So all over the world, there's been programs uh, rolled out, uh, aiming most of the time at saving these uh, women or girls who uh, end up in these uh, uh, situations without uh, actually uh, having a real rationale of fighting uh, the real reasons. And once again, uh, not, not taking... Uh, uh, in, in a, taking account of the complexity uh, of the reasons that push these women, these girls, to want to uh, uh, emigrate or to find uh, uh, working conditions by taking uh, huge risks. And, uh, and uh, you know, again, there's been many countries such as India, Cambodia, or Thailand, uh, in fact, uh, we, we can hear uh, from the victims that, uh, you know, they're fleeing from uh, the uh, traffickers, but they're also running away from the persons or organizations who are actually fighting against uh, trafficking because, you know, all these programs exactly uh, sometimes have had uh, collateral uh, negative effects on uh, uh, very vulnerable uh, populations and just talking about prostitution. So once you actually uh, criminalize uh, whether it's been the, the clients or the prostitutes or one type of work, if you, if you make it a criminal offense. Very often what you're doing, the reality of the men who actually pay for these services and the women who are going to, uh, who are going to end up having to sell these services, this reality doesn't change. So what we're doing is you know, pushing uh, uh, these activities into uh, uh, making them illegality and by increasing the vulnerability of these people. So, so that's what we've seen happening in many countries, such as India, once again, Cambodia, Thailand, and uh, they actually have hardened uh, their uh, 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 regulations and, you know, uh, and uh, police raids in the uh, um, houses have created a lot of uh, uh, problems and have actually pushed, you know, many people uh, into going illegal. So, you know, working on this issue is also about uh, looking at uh, where are the sources of funding and uh, how these sources of funding play on these different questions. So being a foundation that doesn't have any agenda, whether it be political or religious or any other type of agenda, so the privilege that is ours, is to be able to uh, provide support to organizations like La Strada and others, uh, you know, that are really uh, committing to uh, uh, Im implementing a an approach of human rights, and hum human right that puts the victim at the very center, the heart, and that tries to uh, understand how these measures, these policies that are being implemented can have uh, negative effects and to try and uh, prevent this from happening. And one thing we don't see much of in this uh, d d discussion of uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the policies and politicians, at the, very, the people who are the most involved are not uh, uh, part of the debate. And typically, the victims themselves or those who uh, work uh, 
in uh, prostitution or the, uh, per, the, 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 the uh, migrants are not uh, groups who, who, are, who take part in the discussion. Uh, we're not accustomed to uh, discussing pol these policies with those who are going to be the most impacted or uh, the, who, uh, for whom uh, these policies are going to have a direct impact. They're left out of uh, uh, the equation. So we're trying to do our utmost to actually uh, uh, grow, grow a network of uh, victims and uh, survivors of uh, trafficking and who will be able to, uh, you know, actually to uh, uh, voice their demands and who will be able to be, you know, real partners in the political discussions. So this network has uh, been uh, uh, developed in the United States. It's a network uh, that has uh, more than 100 uh, survivors of uh, trafficking activities and they, they attended uh, meetings and they went to the Congress, and today they can actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, give their testimonials and, you know, uh, you know what their uh, view is of, on provision, uh, on uh, prevention, and what should be the answers for the victims. And uh, I think this is... Uh, so it's a foundation such as ours and uh, f philanthropy in general uh, can afford uh, to uh, uh, actually uh, uh, work on initiatives and to give a voice to those who don't have a voice. Thank you very much. I would still have many, many questions to ask uh, you, but, uh, you know, time uh, flies, and this is an interactive festival, so we're not going to give the floor uh, to the audience. So please, uh, could you, when you ask your question, uh, uh, say who you're addressing the question to, and I think there is a roving mic. I can't see hands uh, up from here. First question. Difficult to see with a light shining in your eyes. Yes, I have uh, two perhaps naive questions. The first one is for Daniela. Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think the education in Moldova is free up to the university level. I'm very well aware of the fact that the schools that those people in those villages go to are very poor. But my question is maybe if we invest in the education from the beginning, we at least make these women, because it was that episode in the movie when the documentary filmmaker was talking to the women in schools and they were somehow aware of this. So maybe investing in an education could be a way of preventing this. And the second question for like everybody is, um, these movies are good for increasing awareness, but is anybody paying for this? I mean, from the people in the hospital, the negligent people that send that uh, person home to uh, the PIMS or the people who are actually uh, lying about job offers, is there any active uh, action, basically, uh, after these movies? Thank you. Daniela. Ou de tel film, Daniela. Merci beaucoup de votre question. C'est une très bonne question. En réalité, oui, en Moldavie. And uh, yes, we run a lot of prevention activities uh, uh, around uh, the country. So uh, we have a team of 25 uh, volunteers working in uh, school, uh, organizing peer-to-peer -peer, uh, education program on prevention uh, trafficking in human beings. And also we have a uh, special agreement with the Ministry of Education and we hope since the next year the prevention of human trafficking will become one of the uh, matter uh, of, uh, of uh, teaching in school. Uh, and also another important issue, and we also have the, already the agreement for this year with the Ministry of Education, we start an education program on promotion, harmonized relationships. So it's one of the way to prevent domestic violence and to give uh, to young generation the alternative ways uh, in order to to have skills and be aware how it's possible to recognize the first sign of violence, but also how you can uh, organize your family without violence. 
peut-être un mot sur perhaps you know a few words on uh, uh, the role of such films i think it's all about uh, raising awareness so in countries as was just explained you know uh, countries where the women come from and uh, countries of destination such as switzerland where one uh, uh, doesn't always uh, imagine that there could be trafficking in human beings and in fact there is and you know uh, the importance of such films of campaigns i mean there will be a national campaign that's been organized by the, the services of mrs somaroga that will take place in 2016 and the, the, and the fact that everybody must feel involved because you know the, the you know the, the 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 entry for trafficking is the police that discovers victims it could be the hospital with the people you know who come to ask for uh, help but very often it's you know people like you and me who've heard you know through neighbors people who had been actually uh, abused or people who were you know keeping children and you know their uh, living conditions didn't seem uh, uh, seemed actually uh, unbearable and it's good to show reality so that everyone feels involved and uh, so that uh, each one of us one day or another uh, can actually uh, uh, see that realize that this is happening in his or her neighborhood and to actually uh, uh, announce it and uh, make it known and you said it earlier on you know the, the, the networks have to be uh, I mean there's not just the victims but you have networks around this so we're going to move on to a second question now Yes, uh, good evening. This is a question uh, to uh, all of you uh, and the, the moderator as well. So I was shocked when uh, said at the beginning that was you know a person that been invited who couldn't uh, be here uh, this evening because she had uh, been uh, actually uh, she'd lost a job at the United Nations. She couldn't come because she's uh, ill. But uh, this person had been fired from the United Nations because uh, she intervened and she actually. Uh, took a, a stand on uh, the issue of uh, trafficking of uh, human beings and women. So can, can I can I don't know what we can do here you, you know, to be useful here. All of us here on the serious issues you've mentioned, apart from uh, providing our support to the associations who work on these uh, topics. I mean, could we perhaps uh, you know uh, ask for uh, this person to uh, get her job back? Her, her okay. Thank you for saying this, but uh, this is not. Uh, this didn't happen lately. This is something that happened a few years ago. And Madeleine Ries is now working in another sector where she's also involved in working on the trafficking of human beings. So there's no link with the fact that she's not here this evening. She's uh, uh, unwell. And this is not uh, nothing that can be changed today. I mean, again, it's been sorted out. But we felt it important to say so because, you know, around, we have, you know, Mariana and people who have been fighting for years on end and we're trying to actually get this message heard on the trafficking of human beings. And we, it seems that it's difficult to get this message across, and it seems difficult to, to actually, you know, get, uh, you know, the, the grips on the size of uh, the problem. And when people talk about it, you know, they take a risk of uh, losing their job. And you heard that we're talking about billions of dollars uh, at stake, huge amounts. There's corruption behind all of this. And it's true, it's very difficult, you know, to uh, work in fields such as uh, this where you're actually uh, uh, talking about situations where there's huge, uh, uh, humongous sums of money at stake. Mariana? If you would like to know more about uh, what happened with Madeleine, go and see the film, or actually buy it on Amazon, I suppose. It's called The Whistleblower, and it's an amazing film. It's actually about what happened in Bosnia. Florence, you wanted to say the same, right? Um, it's what happened in Bosnia when Madeleine Rees was actually working as, um, she, she was the head of the Human Rights Office, of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. And um, a, a woman from the uh, military police, a US woman, um, an officer, actually was uh, on one hand the whistleblower because she um, saw how fellow soldiers and police officers are using uh, in the brothels trafficked Bosnian women. Um, and she went to, to her command and she 
um, Officer Bol Bolkovac was her name, and she tried to alert everybody about what was happening. Unfortunately, uh, at that time, nobody really was prepared to pay attention. Um, and then really Madeleine became the, the whistleblower because she stepped in and am I telling the story properly? It's, it's quite a detailed story. It's a wonderful film to watch. So Madeleine became the whistleblower. She really uh, went to, to the representative of the United Nations. He wasn't prepared to, to pay attention. And then Madeleine went to the press. But this is how trafficking and... and um, Basically, the use of trafficked persons by UN personnel stopped, or at least there, there is, um, maybe it hasn't stopped entirely, but at least now there is zero tolerance, and there are some internal regulations of how, you know, the Blue Helmets are trained, everybody who engages in United Nations missions, but it was very much because of Madeleine, and actually the High Commissioner at the time, Louis Arbor, offered her a job here in Geneva, so she came to, to work in Geneva. But yes, she kind of lost her job in Bosnia for what was happening. Thank you very much uh, for uh, these uh, clarifications. Another question? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, and Marie von Arx, so uh, 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 deputy at the, uh, the council and a uh, member, uh, founder of the uh, God program that uh, actually uh, homes uh, uh, victims of uh, uh, trafficking. I have a question. So when we're talking about uh, uh, reinsertion of victims in their home countries. Do you have uh, training programs to train them for jobs where they will no longer be financially dependent of the people who uh, might have exploited them so that they can work? You talked about, uh, you know, psychological support, uh, and so also w within their families, but uh, what about, you know, actually uh, teaching them a uh, job or profession so that they're independent? Thank you for your question. Yes, uh, we have some training programs. Unfortunately, they are not uh, fully covered by uh, a national budget. So many of these programs depends on non-governmental organization and also uh, depends on fi external fin financial support. Uh, but another issue is also how to find a um, well-pay or decent working uh, job. So, uh, because in Moldova the salaries are very low, uh, it's uh, about uh, 200 euros per month, but the prices are similar like you have here in Geneva. So, it's rather complicated to have a job or to start uh, a business being uh, a victims of uh, trafficking because uh, not only because of the, the this um, uh, low opportunities but also because of the trauma many of victims became uh, mentally ill so it's another social big issue how uh, we and I mean how Lastra, uh, how Moldova as a state are ready to to respond to this new challenge. Can I just add that um, what of course Lastrada is doing in Moldova and in other countries is absolutely admirable, but this is not to be left. This is the responsibility of the states. And this issue of reintegration of the victims, of prevention, of education programs, this is responsibility of the governments. And it shouldn't be left in the hands of a group of uh, wonderful women and men who work in an NGO sector with limited resources to try and sort out the whole, um, the whole um, cycle of um, of helping the victims, of prosecuting the traffickers or uh, reintegration of the victim. I mean, the whole cycle of trying to deal with trafficking. So that's why, um, and Daniela was just saying, it's very hard for uh, the traumatized victims 
and survivors of, of trafficking, which is a multiple levels of violence. It's the rape we were hearing here. Uh, pregnant women have been used and raped and raped again. Um, it's very difficult for them to keep such a job. And I think we as international community also have not really had um, creative ideas of how, how to deal with the survivors. All that, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is let's, let's make them seamstresses, right? Let's buy a sewing machines and, and teach them these skills. And I remember there was a survivor of trafficking a few years back who came into the podium in a conference and said, no more sewing machines. We don't want to be seamstresses. And we were at Trust Women, another wonderful conference in London, talking about trafficking in December, where um, there were survivors of trafficking who said, listen, we want to be leaders, we want to have a voice, we want to be considered in these conversations about how to tackle trafficking and not just be treated as some passive you know, commodity of the victims that we need to uh, reintegrate, help, make them seamstresses, give them a... Why, why can't some of these survivors, after the healing, become scientists or teachers or, or leaders or, I don't know, union leaders? And that's where we... This is how we, we have to change our culture of how we think about about survivors, but also how we think about prevention. Uh, there was another anecdotal story from Africa, how, from one country in Africa, how uh, an international organization created um, a placard to actually alert people about trafficking, writing on it, without really thinking that half of the, or the majority of the population in this place where they put it is illiterate. They couldn't read it. So are we relevant culturally? Are we relevant in these Moldovan or Bulgarian villages? Are we relevant with our preventive efforts? And what will happen in Bulgaria, for example, in my country, if everybody is very well educated when there are no jobs. Then you will have nuclear scientists and astronauts, you know, being trafficked because there are no jobs. They will be going again to, to make these unpopular, unsafe migration decisions. Okay, so one very last question. Well, if there are no uh, last question, I suggest you know we make the most of these last few minutes for each one of you to uh, actually uh, deliver a message. I mean, you're very, very close to the United Nations. You know, you know this is uh, you know uh, you, you have free speech here. What do you feel like saying as regards the issue of uh, uh, trafficking of human beings? You know, what is your Take home message? Is it, a, is it a message of hope? Is it a message of uh, pessimism? Daniela, what do you feel like saying? Well, today is uh, International Women's Day, so I want to be optimistic. <laughs> uh, and I, I think uh, we, at least from civil society organization, calls. Um, to full empower and involve women in all levels of economical, social, and cultural activities. So I think it's in order to achieve the equal rights, equal opportunity, we really need to uh, fulfill with this important uh, objective to involve and to empower, really empower women in all our levels of activities. Mariana? Mariana? Yes, um, I would say, I would just repeat what I already said a little bit. It's about each of us. I mean, all these big institutions are actually made of people like all of us, United Nations, European Union, OSC, you name it. 
but most importantly, we cannot again rely that uh, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights would sort out the trafficking issue or the UN in general or the OSC. It's not, I mean, it's a bit of a um, kind of, we're waiting again for somebody else to come from outside to sort it for us. I think it starts with each of us. I really think it starts with, um, when we buy something, a t-shirt, and we look at it and we think, is that made of slave labor somewhere? When we um, see, as I mentioned, the disabled Romanians that are begging in, in front of Manor, can we spend five seconds of thinking, are these people really trafficked or not, or they're legally here in our country? Or, um, you know, equally, um, when we see sex workers, uh, are they really trafficked? Are they there because they want to be there, just across the river? And congratulations, really, on Switzerland that you now finally uh, said that in law that uh, 16 and 17 year old children cannot be involved in prostitution because up until 18 years of age it's considered a child. So this was something very positive that happened in this country. So yes, the message of hope is about us, each of us being awake, being vigilant, being a citizen because tomorrow doesn't matter how educated we are, each of us actually could um, possibly face such, um, such decisions and could possibly become a victim of trafficking, despite how rich, despite how educated we are, and not from the small villages in Bulgaria or Romania. Thank you. So, so um, okay, I'd like to talk on the same lines as Mariana. Uh, so, as I, when I began speaking, I talked about the complexity of the issue. So, again, you have to be careful about uh, ready-made solutions, careful there. We have to think more in long-term uh, solutions and the uh, deep causes. So, when we're talking of uh, when we're talking about uh, uh, s trafficking for sexual exploitations, you know, we should uh, look at where the demand comes from, you know, buying sexual services, and how do we, uh, you know, um, uh, give rise to new generations of uh, children, uh, boys and girls, that have been uh, brought up in another mindset, and what is the investment? What are we investing in our schools today to work on these issues and to, uh, you know, work, you know, at the very root of the question. And then when we're talking about uh, uh, trafficking for uh, uh, labor exploitation, ask ourselves what uh, uh, makes it possible for us today to uh, consume and buy products at very accessible prices when the majority of these uh, uh, products have in fact uh, uh, in the production chain has involved uh, people who have been um, uh, victims of exploitation and trafficking. We really need to give serious thought to this. And as consumer, we have a power. We have a, a real power to influence, have an influence on these issues. And we've seen a lot of change, a lot of changes uh, uh, through the power of the consumer. So we shouldn't stop. No, we shouldn't just stop at ready-made solutions. And we shouldn't believe in the solution, because there are no such things as ready-made solutions for these issues. Thank you very much. So we've come to the end of the debate. So my uh, message for hope is to see um, you know, women of uh, your uh, uh, level of quality, the three of you, and to have uh, you know the chance of having uh, women such as you fighting for other women. And this is a uh, reason for hope. And uh, what Mariana said, let's hope that this evening will actually uh, wake up uh, people's uh, conscious and uh, that one day we'll be able to uh, be able to stop talking about uh, commoditization of uh, uh, people. So I'd like to thank uh, the uh, Festival of Human Rights to have actually put on the agenda this uh, topic. And I wish you all a very good evening.